welcome back to the series where we build a free game collection. In this series, I have built up a fairly sizable Xbox 360 collection. I have a very nice looking Mega Drive collection, if I do say so myself. And of course we have PS5 and PS4. Everything else is kind of surplus to requirements at this point. I do have Xbox One games and I am gonna keep them and we'll touch upon that in future episodes when we finally get round to actually doing something about it. But in terms of like PS2, Wii, Wii U, anything Nintendo really, I'm not too bothered about it. I don't really know what I'm going to do with them just yet, so they are just going to stay and they'll be in the background every now and again or whatever. But recently I went through my PS4 collection to see if there were any games that I didn't care too much about that CEX offered some favourable trade prices on, and I found a few. So I think all of these came from the same deal. This was a while ago, and if I have the footage, of course I'll show you, but I, it was a long time ago now, so I can't really remember if I do. But it was NHL uh, 18, 19, and 20, together with WWE 2K15, as well as Battlegrounds, which was a game I'd actually been looking at quite a few times. I played it a bit and it's just not something I'm ever going to play again. But going forward, I do want to get some sort of Xbox with Game Pass and as NHL is on Game Pass, I'm more than happy to just have it there and not have it physical. Even though I am a physical collector, obviously, I don't need to have every single game physical. Once the new one comes out, I'm never going to play the old one. There's just no nostalgia there. It's different for other video games. So I was quite surprised in a way by the trade prices of these games. So NHL 18 only traded in for £1.60. NHL 19 is a £5 trade, which is really surprising given that it's a sports game and from 2019. And it's the exact same story for NHL 20. WWE 2K Battlegrounds only traded in for £1.60, which was a shame, but uh, 2K 15 traded in for £4. And again, that is a little bit surprising. You wouldn't really think it for a game that is effectively nine years old and a sports game trading in for £4. That's a lot more than you'd expect. I did also take in a couple of other games as well. They were PlayStation 2 games that I've had for a long time. I've tried to sell them on uh, Vinted and various other places and they just won't go. If you remember a long time ago, I went to a car boot sale and there were just mountains and mountains of PlayStation 2 games. Someone bought a collection and he took all the PS2 games that weren't really worth much to the boot sale, literally threw them on the floor and was just selling them off for a pound each. So I picked up, I think 11, put a couple into the collection. I think I might have sold one that I got like a five or four or something and then the rest of them have just been sort of lingering and I haven't been able to sell them so I decided to trade them. Those games were Crazy Chicken which I got £1.40 trade for, Safari Africa Adventures or Safari Adventures Africa £1 trade in on that and Echo the Dolphin £1.40 trade on that and I also took a Switch game in. Now I don't actually have footage of me, I don't think I've got footage of me picking this up or do I have it in my collection to show you obviously uh, but it is Olympic Games. Tokyo 2020. One of the first Switch games I actually bought was uh, Tokyo 2020 and it's not a game that I've played recently at all. In fact, I would much rather go and play Beijing 2008 on the Xbox 360 than I would play Tokyo 2020. So I had a quick look at the trade price. It was down at £6 at one point. They gave me £12, which was quite nice. I also took in Jonah Lomu Rugby on the PS1 and here it is. So you might be thinking, well, of course they rejected it because he still has it in his hands and you'd be right they did which was absolutely fine I normally give the discs a bit of a wipe over try and clean them up as much as I can just to like not give them a reason to reject them right so I hand them this game and he tries to scan it it doesn't scan because most PlayStation 1 games don't scan you can do this yourself if you go on the app because they just use their app right so it doesn't scan he types it in he gives me a price it's four pounds trade which is what I've been trying to sell it for more or less like a five right? He then looks at the disc, he's in an R and he takes it to another member of staff and they basically say no it's too far gone we can't put it in a disc cleaner because it's just a PS1 game which is fine it makes sense and it was rejected. I had absolutely no problem with it at all. In fact I was just that little bit more grateful when I found out that the trade price with the manual and without the manual is the same. They give you £4 and I have the manual. In fact the manual is in pristine condition. I also have this little pull out thing here. Why is that important? Well it goes on eBay for about a fiver. That's right. You can sell the manuals, especially in this condition, for between three and five pounds online. So if they're given the same amount in CEX for with and without manuals, it just makes sense to take the manuals out of them, sell them separate, make a little bit more money, and then trade this in by itself. So what I did is I went home, looked at the disc. I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So what I've done is I've just cleaned it, given it a proper good clean, and it now looks presentable. I think it is trade worthy. Unfortunately, uh, 
I took it to my local CEX today and he scanned it, it didn't scan and he said, sorry, we don't take it anymore, it's discontinued, which is obviously not true. Didn't argue the point, I, I just can't be bothered. I'll take it again, I'll get another member of staff who will type it in because they do take it because it's on their stock file. It's not that they don't take it, it's just that PlayStation 1 games, for whatever reason, don't really scan on the CEX app. Maybe he didn't know this, maybe he couldn't be bothered. Either way, that will have to go in again, but I am going to sell these separately. It is a little bit confusing why they don't offer just that little bit more, like a pound more for the manuals, uh, because they sell it for two pound more with the manual than without. So that doesn't really make much sense to me, but there we are. The other game I had a little bit of grief with in the Cardiff CEX was NHL 20. Uh, they didn't actually want to take it. It works because I've tried it, right? But if they're not happy with it, they're not happy with it. There's no point arguing with them. There's no point giving them attitude. They are doing their job and that's all they're doing, right? So again, put it back in my bag and I was like, that's fine. No problem. Took it into my local today. Took it no problem. It is what it is. Now, how much credit did that give me? Well, for what I traded in to the Cardiff store, I got £28 in a voucher. And then today I took in NHL 20 and I got an additional £5 in voucher. So we are looking at £33 in credit. There was one game in particular in the Cardiff store that I wanted. Before I get to those games and something else that I picked up, I obviously went and had a little look around Cardiff. If you've ever been to Cardiff, you know that that won't take you very long. Uh, but when it comes to video games, it's quite a sad affair in Cardiff City Centre. There's not really, in fact, there aren't any charity shops in the city centre itself. Not one charity shop. There used to be. It's gone. There was a HMV. This is the extent of the gaming section within HMV. So here it is. I don't know what the ply board wood thing is behind it, but um, there we go. So you don't really have much of anything. Uh, there, there are no physical games, just some display cases. They've got some controllers on display as well as the consoles. That's it. One very small bay with about 12 games. That is the entire gaming section within HMV. They obviously have a game as well. It's tucked inside a sports direct as they mostly are these days. There's not an awful lot of room to move in this game and it was particularly busy because the store is closing down. So they're obviously selling things off. And by store, I mean the entire sports direct is closing down because it's moving to a different location. It's actually moving to a much, much bigger premises. So how good it'll look when it eventually opens, I'm not sure. I did didn't really look around too much in this in this store unfortunately because there were just so many people I, I I was like this I couldn't move my arms were by my side and I just couldn't so I just decided you know what I'm out pre-owned it was dwindling anyway but because they brought this in and they're not like okay they're still trading at the moment but how often do people really trade in there they didn't have much of any pre-owned they weren't really knocking money off games so I decided to leave it every now and again I watch other people's videos who go game hunting and they go into charity shops and they have bad bagfuls of games and they find all this stuff. I was invited out of the back. Uh, I, I found this shelf and it had loads of PlayStation 4 games. They were a pound each. Every time I walk into a charity shop, this is what I'm met with. So it's literally a wall full of DVDs and a FIFA. Insert year of FIFA here. So in this one, it was FIFA 19 and I'm pretty sure that they were charging the same price as they do for a DVD. So it would have been like 50 pence or something, which you might think is a good deal. But of course, it's FIFA 19 and absolutely nobody wants it. FIFAs are just not worth anything on any platform unless it's the brand new one or it's like FIFA 23 on the PlayStation 4 that still has a tiny bit of value. Of course, I'm not just sticking to video games here. I do look around the store and I had a very, very good look around that charity shop. So while looking around the Cardiff game store, I noticed a fair few things. They've got a lot of stuff now in cabinets, but they're also putting a lot more of... I didn't film this because it was at the other end and this was a Saturday, it was quite busy. There were a lot of, you know, 20 something pound Xbox 360 games behind glass, which I don't really have a problem with too much because I'm, I'm the first one to complain when CEX put cover reprinted out on the shelves. I've noticed, and it's not just the Cardiff CEX, my local one started doing this as well. I went in there today and they, they are doing the exact same thing. They're putting a lot of the 20 pound plus games on the like Xbox 360, PS3 and such behind glass now or behind the camera counter unless you're looking at the website and you you have a look at what they have in stock in that particular store you will miss some so for example the Cardiff store had Saw 2 on the 360 which is a game that's gone up a lot in price recently it's jumped up by nearly 10 pounds which is frustrating because I need it and I want it I was kind of hoping it was going to drop down a little bit more and it has gone the other way but they have that behind glass and it's like 28 quid it's a bit weird because they have other games out that are like 25 so don't know whether 28 is the threshold but in my CEX they have games out there that 
people are like 30 to 40. Uh, so I don't really know. Maybe different stores have different policies or whatever. They're doing that a lot more now. But things like Mega Drive have never been on the shop floor, but they put them in different places. They put them in this cabinet behind the counter, this cabinet over here, and it's just all over the place. It's a bit of a mess. And it's the same for every CEX store I go in at the moment. They're not all in one place, which is a little bit annoying. But there was one game that I wanted. It's not a biggie because I have got a, a substantial amount of the credit that I got left. And there's half a reason for it, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I did pick up two games here. First of which is a game that I've been kind of after for a while. It's not expensive by any stretch of the imagination. I just never see it in stock anywhere. It is Tony Hawk Proving Ground. Now this game is a game that I, I sunk a fair amount of time into. I didn't play it as much as I did American Wasteland, but I really do like Proving Ground. Complete with the manual as well, and the disc was in pretty good condition, quite surprisingly. So very happy to put that into the collection. Obviously the credit that we got was on screen, what was it, 33? We're down to 29 now, so we'll obviously update the figures there. That will go onto the shelf next to American Wasteland. I think I just have, is it Project 8? I never played that one. I don't know why i don't think it's got very good reviews so that might be why uh, but i think i just have project 8 left to add to the 360 collection and then we are done with tony hawk on the 360 before i get to the next game because there's a little bit more to this next game than just hey here it is this is what i bought it's nothing special whatsoever it's a very very cheap game but there is something different about it and it's something that i kind of want to go for now i don't really know why before i get to that though when i went to the counter to trade in NHL today, uh, I noticed behind the staff member there was a bin that they obviously just throw receipts in and stuff. But on top of all the rubbish was a slip cover, or at least what I'm going to call a slip cover, for a pretty popular game that still has a uh, substantial value. That game was Elden Ring on the Xbox Series X. Now, it doesn't have the game in it, it doesn't have any of the like special edition stuff in it at all. It is literally just the slip cover. I need to try and take the stickers off it because obviously they, they've nearly ruined this really if i leave the stickers on too much longer it will be a lot difficult for me to take them off in fact i'm going to try and take them off now luckily they were only just put on so they came off really really easily and um, this was going in the bin i said to the member of staff is that slip cover just going to go in the bin like you're just going to chuck it and he was like yeah and i said do you mind if i have it this is something that i'm either going to look to maybe sell for a couple of quid because why not right it was free and if someone is willing to pay me a couple of quid for it then i'm going to try and offload it but aside from that if i do pick up Elden Ring and maybe it does come with a book or something we can just pop that on the shelf and it's you know something that we didn't have before I'm not massively into collector's editions for the most part there are a few that I wouldn't mind picking up because they do look kind of cool but when it comes to things like this I don't know why I just don't like seeing it go in the bin even if I don't sell it or I don't really have a use for it I still would rather have it on the shelf even though I don't own the game than I would see it go in the bin and I don't know why they were chucking it either because it does have the price on it so did someone buy it and then decide that they don't want the cover or maybe someone tried to trade it in it only had the game it didn't have the art book or something I really don't know the situation I should have asked really this is going to be worth something to someone even if it sells for a pound it's a pound I didn't have before and I didn't pay for it so you never know it's always worth asking if you see something in a bin in CEX probably makes me sound a bit sad but at the end of the day I just I don't know I like things and I don't like to see things thrown away so so there we go. Now the next game I picked up is, is a game I've played. It's not a good game, I won't lie. I mean, it, it's, it's okay, right? It's a game that I might play through once more before I die, but that's probably going to be about it. It cost me £1.50, and you're going to notice something about this straight away. This is Murdered Soul Suspect. So you effectively die, and then you're stuck in limbo as a detective, and you don't pass over, you're not alive, but you have to solve your own murder kind of thing it's it's an interesting concept and it's there's nothing wrong with it it's not a bad game but it's not a good game it's one of those it's it's fine uh why did i want this and why did i want the promotional copy i don't know why but i really want to start collecting these promotional copies of games i genuinely do not know why i want to but i do and the crazy is this crazy i don't know but the really interesting thing shall we say about these promotional copies i used to see these absolutely everywhere in 
fact, I used to have a fair few from back in the day. So I, I had a couple of copies of, I think, like Pez and a few other games that were sent to us. I think we had a Dead to Rights that was a promotional copy as well at some point. So these aren't too common, and they're more common for certain games than they are others, and they still do this for Xbox Series games as well. So I've seen Xbox One games. There was one in the Cardiff store, actually, I think it was Dirt something or other, and I was very tempted to pick it up, but I'm going to refrain from buying Xbox One games for now. But I really want to pick up the 360 ones, and as I mentioned, they are everywhere. Or rather, they were, because when I decided back in early October that I wanted to buy these promotional ones, I took £15 of my hard-earned profit, took a merry jaunt down to CEX, walked in, burst open the doors and said, show me the promotional copies. Had a little look at the shelf, none. None anywhere. And ever since then, that, apart from sports games, which I'm not interested in, like Madden, you'll find a lot, right? I am not interested in any of those. I want games, not sports games. Uh, racing, different. I will buy those. This is the first one I have found in a CEX since October. So, going to take, obviously, £1.50 off what we have in terms of credit. So, I think that leaves us with, what, 27 50 or something along those lines, which is a decent amount. And I did have a little look at some of the PlayStation 5 games. I was tempted buy one or two and I needed just a little bit more in order to buy Remnant 2 uh, which is a game that for some reason really interests me and I don't really know why and I was tempted by a couple of the other titles in there as well and I kind of almost I didn't feel pressured but I felt like I should have spent it but then I'm thinking well do I want to buy things for the sake of it or would I rather wait to get something that I actually want stuff that's on my list which brings me to the next episode I am going to go through a few of the uh, not not bigger hitters, if you will, but some of the like the staple games that I want to pick up this year. They could be on the 360, they could be on the Mega Drive, they could be on the PS5, PS4, whatever it may be. But the one thing that I really do want to do this year is build up my promotional copy collection on the 360. And I know there are going to be some questions about this, so I'm going to get one of them out of the way straight away. Yes. Sorry, what was the question? Oh yeah, um, if I have uh, a promotional copy of a game, but I don't have the normal, or vice versa, yes, I will buy it as well. So I'll have two versions of said game. It's not going to be something I look to do straight away, it'll be something I look to do over time, but I want as many of these as possible, with the exclusion of sports games. I don't want FIFA, I don't want PES, I don't want Madden. And like I said, I don't know why, it's just something that I want. Uh, they do kind of look cool on the shelf, but at the same time, you just don't see them that much anymore and it's something that I, I kind of want. I've seen a few people going after like the essentials collections on the PlayStation 3 and there are some strange people who like to collect classics on the 360. If you collect essentials, classics or indeed promotional copies of anything on any platform let me know in the comments and let me know why. What am I going to do with the £27.50 in credit? Well I'm going to look to try and build it up a little bit. Now I will absolutely spend it if something pops up that I want but at the moment of course you know I want a 1x and I want a series X. 2750 is obviously not going to touch the sides. We need a lot more than that and I could just sit there and purge my collection until I could afford it because I could absolutely do that and maybe I know the argument would be well why don't you go through the Wii, Wii U and whatever and maybe trade a lot of that stuff in to maybe get one and I may do that. There is a small part of me that kind of wants to do it and I might do it but we'll see how it goes. Not a massive fan of buying consoles from CEX because they do inflate the price but I have done it before and I don't regret it because I do love the Switch and we still have that Jonah Lomu to trade in at some point when CEX want to take it. If you want to check out another video from the series you can click here and until the next time goodbye.